Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday night. You know what that means. It's the Almost Comedy Show with your host, Tim Thompson. Let's give him a warm welcome. Yeah. Tim Thompson. Me? I'm up? Okay. Hey, thank you, everyone, for taking time out of your busy Tuesday. Come down and watch Almost Comedy here, where we do this every <laughs> other uh tuesday is that about right and thank you to our uh disembodied voice rob for putting this all together how is everyone doing tonight yeah Ooh, yeah oh yeah you know it's spooky times we're uh it's our last tuesday before halloween and uh even scarier the election so uh yeah, yeah. Uh, i know right i uh i got ghost dogs with me so uh it's terrifying they're all uh really scary but still all good boys <laughs> Except one, it's, she's a good girl. But it's, <laughs> it's it's easier having ghost dogs, you know, cleaning up after them because you know all ghosts they poop marshmallows. That's where we get them. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> all marshmallows are ghost poop. See, look, you're learning on a Tuesday. So weird. <laughs> I always feel bad for ghosts that, like, when they die, they're stuck in their jobs. Like, you think ghost pirates want to continue being pirates after they die? That's. <laughs> kind of sad i don't know like what if you have a job at blockbuster and you died as the rewinder there's no more <laughs> blockbusters what are you doing you're haunting like a, a, now a, a a costco I, I don't know that's kind of sad <laughs> i mean what if you're going to school at night to become a graphic designer but now you're still stuck you know wishing people hey watch liar liar uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's on dvd what's a dvd you bastard millennials <laughs> I always worry about ghosts. It's they say like ghosts stick around because they have unfinished business. So that means a lot of ghosts in the tri-state area are Jets fans. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all go away once they like at least make it to the NFC champs. You know, it's it's not happening. You know, football is weird. I had friends who love, you know, they would wear the almost a full uniform and go to the games. I always thought that was weird that you're going to a grown man's job wearing his work uniform. <laughs> kind of creepy. I, I, I don't know. Like, and like, no, no, it's all right. I've been following the kids since college. Like, <laughs> okay, that makes it normal. That's <laughs> just following this 20 year old since uh, high school, actually. Wow, that's kind of creepy. Try that at a 7 Eleven, huh? Go in there wearing the guy's uniform and say, hey, man, I've been watching you since you were at Northport High School. My God, you've done great. <laughs> the way you change those coffee filters is pretty much awesome. Man, I hear you're getting traded to Wawa's. You're going to Wawa's? What the? <laughs> you have loyalty? I have loyalty. It's in this little card here. Can I get a free coffee now? So, Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> These are the weird things I, you know, go around my mind is we're all stuck at home. I, we're all wandering around. It's kind of weird being out now. I don't know what to do anymore. I tried a new job. I got a job in construction, but uh, I have trouble mostly with the cat calls. I can't do it. So <laughs> if, if I walk by and I go, come here. I got, I got to give you your ear medicine. <laughs> Please come here, don't scratch me. And so it's the usual. Hey, who are you? What are you doing with all our equipment? Come back here. You know, it's, I'm not good with. <laughs> but we got a lot of good comedy coming up. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Excited? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. you got you're in for a treat. Now, if you're new to Zoom and you're watching this and you're in uh, the audience, please, if you have any background noise, lower it, turn it off, mute it. Uh, you know. Like the census worker escapes from the basement. You know, turn off your computer and take care of that. All right. But uh, we got our first comic coming up. She's been doing comedy all across the country. And she used to write for Joan Rivers. You're in for a treat. Put your hands together for Helene Witt. Thank you. Thank you. That's Helene. Thank you. Well, I have to tell you the truth, Tim. You know, there was a little old lady who lived upstairs from me and her granddaughter was at camp. Her name was Joan Rivers. I wrote some jokes to send to camp to her granddaughter. <laughs> yes, I wrote for It, it works. A credit is a credit. <laughs> Tackling me now, ladies and gentlemen, on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, 
Um, yeah, my name is Helene Witt, and uh, some people look at me and say, you're the love child of Barry Manilow and Barbara Streisand? No. <laughs> but, you know, in the yearbook, everybody's getting their yearbook picture and putting it on the Facebook in sympathy for the class of 2020. Well, when I looked in my yearbook, there I was next to Wilma Flintstone. But, uh, <laughs> I love, Richie, I love getting older, you know. At, at Wendy's, I pay half price for my coffee. In the New York subway, half price. If that's not worth getting older, what is? I'm going to be 71 years old. And I remember two years ago, I blew out my candles and I made my wish for 69. But here I am in the <laughs> pandemic. I haven't been out in seven months. Yeah, it's wow. something. You, you know, these Zoom shows are too much. You can see my background. I have a beetle room here. But some people have their diplomas on the wall. My diploma is in the bathroom. I was a 60s hippie, you know, up the pig and all that. So my <laughs> diploma is still in the bathroom, which isn't bad because if I, I ever run out of toilet paper, I have that parchment. You can <laughs> have havoc on the hemorrhoids. But, um, you know, I said I have a Beatles room here. I mean, I'm 71, but I act 16. I have a whole Beatles room. And, you know, I, I, I say Paul McCartney's real name is Paul Moskowitz. Yeah. <laughs> he got his guitar for his bar mitzvah from <laughs> Brian Epstein. <laughs> but, you know, some people aren't impressed that I met the Beatles. I walked around Central Park with the Beatles and people don't like to be one up, you know, I call it one upmanship, you know, like, oh, Helene, big deal. For example, my doctor is the biggest endocrinologist in all of the North Shore of Long Island. He <laughs> said to me, I'm not impressed that John Lennon sang to you and here's your picture of it. Big deal. He said, I'll be impressed if you bring John Lennon into this office. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said to me. So that whole thing about one-upmanship, here I am bragging about knowing the Beatles, and I don't like people who have one-upmanship, a lot of nerve I have. But um, I think my time is almost up, believe it or not, because I have to go take my my uh, my liver pill. You know, that's a joke about getting older. So thank you. Oh, my God, I have three minutes. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Play witch. Lovely. She really does brag to everyone she meets about how she knows uh, the Beatles. She bragged to one guy in a park once, and that turned out to be Mark David Chapman, and that was a mistake. <laughs> he had to one up her. He's so crap. Oh, I know. Oh, going to a park. That's awful. All right. So, so we got our next comic coming up to the screen. You've seen him on the Late Late Show with James Corden and the new Gong Show. Ladies and gentlemen, let him hear it. Danny Deche, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Hi, hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Danny Deche. Yeah, from San Francisco. And uh, by the way, all our buses now in San Francisco are equipped with uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, one of the buses I rode on actually broke down and cried. <laughs> 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 So living here in San Francisco, um, well, we celebrate like Halloween all week. Uh, so I went to the grocery store and I saw this witch reaching for a, a, some lettuce in the uh, you know the grocery section. As soon as she reached for the lettuce, the, the sprinklers went off and what and it, it wet her hand. So the next thing she says is, "I'm melting! I'm melting! I'm melting!" <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so clean up now too. It's another witch. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, th th this always happens to me. Uh, whenever I go into a store, uh, customers come up to me and they ask me questions because they think I work there. I mean, do, do I look like an assistant manager? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, a while back, I was over at the sports shop in the mall, you know, just minding my own business, when this guy comes up to me with a parking garage ticket in his hand. And he says to me, excuse me, sir, can you please validate me? And I go, uh, sure. Um, you're a good person. Everyone likes you. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The guy goes, oh, yeah, very funny, wise guy. I was talking about my ticket. So I look at his ticket, and I say, you're a good ticket. Everyone likes you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the guy gets mad at me, starts yelling at me. Store manager comes over to see all the yelling's about, and, and he fires me. Yeah, I don't even work there. He fires me. <clears throat> yeah, although I did get my two-week severance pay. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, so um, yeah, recently got myself a, a car. Uh, I got me a, a, a real man's car. I got me a big old 79 Oldsmobile. Ooh. It's an estimated, I don't care, miles per gallon. <laughs> and his hood ornament is a smart car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he took my car for a car wash in a Brazilian wax. <laughs> and, <laughs> and when I got my car back, all the carpets were gone. <clears throat> Yeah, so, uh, oh, by the way, um, uh, whenever I go to Starbucks, I always order uh, eight cups of coffee uh, because I like hearing my name. And, <laughs> and by the way, on, uh, it's, don't forget to vote because uh, some of the Starbucks, you can actually vote at some of the Starbucks. And if you buy a coffee, they will let you vote twice. Make <laughs> <laughs> sure how much time I got. Let's see. Uh, okay, how about, uh, hey, did you hear the one about the uh, two ants who ran away to get married? Yeah. Uh, well, what do you call it, two ants who ran away to get married? Uh, Antelope. Antelope. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, there's a survey on the news that said 62% of America's workers are having sexual relationships with someone else in the same workplace. So it got me thinking, man, I need to get a job. <laughs> Hell yeah. anyway, I am a musician. I'll play one song as I, before I leave. Woo! Let's see. Can we open up my instruments? Hmm. Number two pencil. Let's see. Let's see where you guys this song. <laughs> hey, you're doing it. Hey. Get me. No encore? Yeah. Encore. <laughs> oh. Danny Ditch, everybody. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Looks like Helene has a new obsession. <laughs> Yay. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> Thank you for Helene for letting me know. All right. We got more coming at you. This guy, you're going to love him. Put your hands together for Richie the Head Parisi. All right. All right. I just got myself vanity plates in my car. Just a head. Because when I'm driving, all you see is just a head. <laughs> Yeah, and I am Italian, 100% Italian, meaning I'm 50% Stunad, 50% Gabados. <laughs> and you know, you know what I I work, people put a, I don't know, hate them, say it's, well, I, I, I didn't get mad. I get a birth announcement on the wall, you know, people have kids. I don't mind the name, the sex, the weight, but when they put the height, that's what bothers me. <laughs> On this day, well, I, I mean, sorry, birth, uh, 20 inches long. 20 inches. They just born already a third my height. <laughs> you know? And I buy lottery tickets once a week. I want to win lotto. And people ask me, Rich, if you win, what's the first thing you're going to do with the money? I go, first thing I'm going to do, get a vasectomy. <laughs> because the dumb head won't have any problems. The smart head will take care of things. You know? And I also went to this new Christian-based burger place in my neighborhood. It's called Holy Cow. <laughs> their, their, their slogan is have it Yahweh <laughs> oh so I know I ordered the Lamb of God burger the St. Teresa tater tots the Absolution <laughs> vodka and for, for dessert, the drink I for dessert sorry dessert I had the hot apple pious <laughs> and if you have a kids meal it's a holy trinity meal it comes with popcorn shrimp a <laughs> communion cookies and a plastic <laughs> Jesus. But they also have a family meal too. It's called the Last Supper Family Meal. It feeds 12. <laughs> and then, you know, I don't like rap music that much. But if I was and I was to be a rap star, my name would be Two Papa Zit. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, joined, I joined Facebook years ago to get back in touch with people I knew from high school. They either beat me up or turn me down for dates. But in high school, I was voted most likely to piss over Jehovah Witness. <laughs> so, you know, just try this new fusion restaurant too. Half Asian, half Italian. It's called Fungools. <laughs> their, their signature dish is some wop slop. <laughs> and I don't have any kids. I was told by friends, family, doctors, and clergy not to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, you know, I work for the post office. I work on the deck, and sometimes people come in that don't work for the post office or deliveries, and they all ask me the same question. 
do you have a bathroom here? <laughs> I said, no, we all go out and shit in the corner. All right? <laughs> Listen, you've been a great audience. Back to our host. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey. Richie. Oh, Richie. Never get that vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> we need more of you. We do. All right. We got more coming at you. Child support. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming at us. <laughs> <laughs> awful, awful thoughts being put in my head. Coming at us is a comic coming out of New York City. Put your hands together for Andrew Chavon. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Can you hear me okay, Tim? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Awesome. Hey, everybody. And see you. Good to see you guys. I've been courting you and my girlfriend for, for six months now, and uh, it let me learn a lot of new things about her. Like, she's really good at puzzles and hates the way I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> she told me one night, she, like, dropped a subtle hint. You know, it was, like, really subtle. She, like, whispered, uh, hey, stop breathing. <laughs> uh, like, <laughs> I uh, I'm, and that's all I did during quarantine. I have friends that like learn Spanish, learn coding. All I did was learn how to breathe quietly. <laughs> all, all it does is, is uh, help me prevent being murdered if a serial killer comes to my house and keeps my relationship together. That's it. Uh, what a waste. My girlfriend is um, re has red hair, and when I first started dating her, my friend said, "Oh, I had no idea you were into redheads." And I'm colorblind, so I had no idea I was in that either. <laughs> I had no idea. I, I, I thought I was in the so one type of hair, and it was the hair I thought everyone has. I, I thought I was in the gray heads. But, uh, <laughs> but now I see her differently. Now, now I know she has red hair. Now I think she's feisty. <laughs> Before, I just thought she was mean. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say the B word, but it's a family friendly show. Um, so, so no, I'm joking. The uh, um, being colorblind means, uh, you know, I, I, uh, it, it's like technically a disability, but no one re really treats it like a disability because I think to have a real disability, people need to feel bad for you. Like no one feels <laughs> bad that I can't tell a banana's right. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> you know. Uh, you know, but if I told somebody I, I, I'm blind in one eye, they'd be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. But if I told somebody, hey, every banana for me is a gamble. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's really stupid. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are dramatic about about their quarantine. Like uh, I checked in on one friend and he said, dude, being in quarantine is exactly like being in prison. I, I, he, he was like, is that true for you? And I was like, no, that's not true for me. Uh, and he said, why not? And I said, well, people in prison work out. Uh, <laughs> they have a, they have an exercise yard. People in prison definitely don't eat Burger King delivered. Uh, I do that a couple of times. It's, it's really embarrassing when your delivery fee is more than your food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much for having Yay. me. Thank you. Yeah. Nice. Andrew Chavon. Yeah. With his color blindness, tell him he's in front of the Verrazano. So. <laughs> <laughs> it has been tough being quarantined. I find myself having weird arguments by myself where it starts with, hey, you stay on your side of the bed, laundry. <laughs> <laughs> have all the time in the world to put you away, but I won't. <laughs> gotta have something to look forward to all right we got more coming at you put your hands together for this funny man peter nijak uh, yeah, yeah. how's everyone doing all right um why are you know why are people are obsessed with famous people but why are they mocking former royals harry and megan from moving to the u.s from the united kingdom they should be excited two millennials have left their parents house and not relying on their money <laughs> 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 They were prince and princess, and now they're like real Americans. Unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more about me. I love sports. I'm not a football fan. I'm a New York Jets fan. That's <laughs> funny. Keep on like if I had a criminal record. Still a better record than the Jets. Less criminals. <laughs> Long Island, Long Island, born and raised. <laughs> Thank you guys for your pity laughs. All right. <laughs> Last summer, I walked into a bagel store. A day later, I'm in a viral video and on the news. We've all been through that, right? 
Right. You guys seen the <laughs> Mega Boss guy video? If you yeah, have, yeah. you were lo- you're lucky. He's angry. There was he was five foot short, and he was complaining about women on dating sites that don't want to date him. Join the club, dude. <laughs> 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 I walk in here in the parking Chihuahua, and no, it's this Mega Boss guy. He's harassing the woman making a sandwich and a teenager acting like an idiot. So like most Long Islanders. Yeah. It's like because of my high woman on dating sites don't want to date me. And the girl's like, who said it to you here? Nobody. And he's like, no. And then he puts his tail between his legs. Obviously, he had it under control, but I had enough. I said, calm down. He's like, shut your mouth. You're not God or my father or my <laughs> boss. I'm like, yeah, or a fireman. But you look up to me. And besides dating sites kind of stink. Dude, want to take this outside? I work at a Catholic college with nuns. I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> I'm so tall in the video, my face is cut off. So I'm not embarrassed. Is Hyde a disadvantage, though? He claims that he can't get dates because he's short. The reason why he's famous is because he's short. <laughs> the reason why I'm not famous is because I'm not short. <laughs> He became inf- infamous and I became this. You know, <laughs> made him famous. I'm, I'm sorry. I created a no talent, useless hack. Now I know what it's like to be a producer on Keeping Up with the Kardashians. <laughs> <laughs> Great, I'm Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> right, soccer star Christian Ronaldo said that empty stadiums are like a circus without clowns. Not true, Ronaldo. A circus needs clowns. Soccer fans don't make or break a match. They break opposing fans. <laughs> and the, at the circus, the animals are tame. At the soccer game, they're in the stands. Then he doubled down. He's like, no, actually, empty stadiums are like going to a garden without flowers. A garden without flowers is still something, right? It's dirt. <laughs> it means the Islanders. Oh, okay. All right. Ronaldo said that he even missed opposing fans. Opposing fans... I'm pretty sure it hurt my mother more when her price chrysanthemums died as opposed to you m- missing drunk spitting on you and taunting you. He said, <laughs> he said he missed angry people taunting him. Why? I don't miss my ex-wives. All right. That's my time, you guys. Are back to- <laughs> All right. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest, everyone. No? No. Peter <laughs> Nijak. Okay. Oh, you said I prefer word. Daniel Tosh. Thank you. There you go. Daniel Tosh, everyone. Sorry they canceled you. All right. <laughs> got to be animated to be on TV. Remember that. All right. We got our next comic coming up. She's a Jersey mom and the host of some kind of comedian podcast. Put it together for Terry and Xander. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo. Hey, hey, thanks. Thanks. I know what you're all thinking. What is that sexy pole dancer doing on a Zoom comedy show? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I tell you, a girl's got to make a living. It's, it's been kind of rough for me ever since I sustained that shoulder injury. Um, I love this time of year. I love the fall. The leaves falling, the back to school, and it's gotten cooler outside. I also like the opportunity to pack on a few more pounds and stop shaving. I've got to, I've got to jump on this month's, uh, you know, you've heard of No Shave November. Well, I've got to jump on it because I stopped shaving about three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> I figure by the time spring rolls around, the only time, uh, the only thing that's going to separate me and the bears is I'm going to be the one with the painted claws. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fall is also election season and I got my ballot and I'm trying to learn a little bit more about the candidates. I don't particularly care about the presidential stuff or the state um, elections. I'm more interested in the local candidates. So I was reading up on some of them and, and I love, I love the names and their platforms and the things they represent. So let's see, we've got, uh, we've got a, a mushy teats, mushy teats. And uh, (laughs) she's running for the, for the dairy board. And as I, as I understand it, she has things well in hand. Um, then let's see. Uh, for uh, the town treasurer, there's a guy by the name of Marvin Baldini. Marvin Baldini. And uh, I'm just hoping he uh, doesn't make all the money disappear. <laughs> <laughs> then there's a strange name. A woman named, uh, what does this say? Carrie, 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 is that it? Oh yeah, she's running for the for the big cheese in town. Her name is Carrie Parmigiana. 
Yes. <laughs> and, and she's got it all covered, really. But I heard that the lead, she you did have a lead going into, you know, the election's only, what, 10 days away? She had a lead, but it's been shaved by a guy, uh, Larry Locatelli. Uh, <laughs> has shaved her lead down a bit. So, yeah, the no. election season. You know, remember when, I, I don't know, I could remember a time when I could start my car using a key. Um, do you remember those days? Everybody's using a fob now. Does anybody know what the frig of fob is? <laughs> uh, I can also remember the days when I could actually, you know, sneeze without peeing myself just a little bit. <laughs> and I can remember the days, you know, um, I just heard Peter mention, you know, the, the Kardashians. Remember when all we had to do was keep up with the Joneses? Yeah. Yeah, it was far yeah. e it was far easier back in those days. I can't keep up with the Kardashians. I don't know. Can any of you? <laughs> I'll, be I'll be glad when they're off the air and I can go back to keeping up with the Joneses. They're more my kind of people, if you know what I'm talking about. I should tell you, I should tell you, um, today, um, you know, every day is a holiday. It's a national holiday for just about everything. So today, this is all legit. Looked it up. Today is National Black Cat Day. Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> it's also National American Beer Day. So cheers to you. And it's also National Navy Day. So hey there to all you sailors. <laughs> I just... <laughs> that's that's my time. That's all I've got. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> Marianne Zander. Thank you for that. Get her a machete when December comes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all, she wants, all she wants is a key and urine free allergies. Give it to her. Man. All right. We got more coming at you. This next comic, she's been seen on Asia's Got Talent and the funniest person in the world, live from Tokyo. Put it together for Kalara Sen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's up, world? My name is Kilara Zen, aka Pink Unicorn, and I'm in Tokyo, Japan. And every fall, Japan suffers from a lot of typhoons, and sometimes we receive a, a lot of support from overseas. So I really want to say thank you so much. And honestly, I survived a huge typhoon in the past, which was called Typhoon Yasuko. Yasuko is my mom's name, by the way. <laughs> and the other day, I investigated my family registry, and I was really shocked because it said I was birthed by Mama Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mama Godzilla always complained about who I am. And uh, uh, when I was a little kid, she always said, Kilara, why is your face like that? And I said, because I'm your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, when I brought my boyfriend to my parents' house, she said, Kirala, why do you like such ugly guy? And I said, <laughs> look at your husband. <laughs> <laughs> and she's still complaining like, Kirala, why is your ass such big? Yeah, actually my big is kind of bigger than Japanese average. So I said, well, it could be a very good cushion while I was studying. <laughs> and with this, now I'm dating three black men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and once I became a hikikomori, hikikomori is a Japanese term to mean the people who don't go to work, who don't go to school, who stop everything. In American term, comedian. <laughs> <laughs> and now I am hosting my own show, which is called Japanese Whiskey World. So, of course, my job is to drink whiskey. Now I can call myself workaholic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Japan is very homogenous country, and uh, I even never had thought about my race. But once I came to America, everything was about race, race, and the race. It's appalling. And <laughs> I found out 
I was in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Asians in America are doing really good. Like, uh, uh, they have a better quality of life financially, or we are the best educated, and we are the number two category of porn. <laughs> <laughs> But my mom always told me to study hard to be number one. So I want to be Ichiban. <laughs> and, you, and soon you will call me Stormy Kilara. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's my time. Thank you. Arigato. Yeah. <laughs> Kilara, say <laughs> I, I hope you, your dreams come true. Ichiban. Ichiban. Being number one in uh, uh. porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that won't happen. You're an Asian girl with a big ass that drinks whiskey. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> Just named everything Richie says when he sleeps. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got more coming at you. You've seen our next comic at Governor's, The Brokerage, and an episode of Impractical Jokers. Put your hands together for comedian and author Heather Lorman. Hey. Woo -hoo. Today yeah. is my anniversary. It's my 243rd Zoom comedy show. Woo yeah. I'm really in the Bahamas. This is just a virtual background. <laughs> I got to get off Facebook. I'm broke. People keep asking me for donations. I'm unemployed. My response is, go fund yourself. Fund <laughs> you. <laughs> fund off. <laughs> You'd think being on unemployment, I wouldn't have to work. I haven't worked so hard. I broke my finger hitting redial 10,000 times a day. <laughs> but I had to go on disability to collect unemployment. <laughs> oh. And I just got divorced. I know. It's sad. Don't clap out there. I might steal your husband or your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I got divorced very sad, but it's not like my funeral. I hear the whispers. She's in a much better place. At least she's not suffering anymore. <laughs> Anyone have his number? <laughs> Vultures. <Yeah. laughs> and the divorce settlement, I won the house and my dog. But he had all the memberships. No more gym for me. No more Costco for me. No more BJ's for him. <laughs> I win. And I'm going with divorcee because anything ending in say sounds better. Divorcee, fiance, tarje. <laughs> Actually, I want to punch people in the face that say tarje <laughs> because target is the cool word now, right? Isn't everyone going and taking their shotguns to the target practice? <laughs> now that I'm single, I need to protect myself. I walk my dog alone at night, so I have my weapon ready. A hot bag of dog crap. <laughs> <laughs> We're living in such a crazy world. My Venezuelan friends are so sick of the looting and the rioting. Government control. Here. In the U.S., <laughs> they're moving back home. And at least the riots were peaceful here on Long Island. It turns <laughs> out a bunch of Karens can't lift a brick. <laughs> they, they still complained. I miss the simple things like this half of my face. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm wasting tons of smiles behind my mask. <laughs> I ordered lunch. I said flagel, not bagel. Do I look like I eat extra carbs? <laughs> I walked in a 7-Eleven, absentmindedly forgot my mask. I went up to the counter, asked the guy, you know, how much for a mask? Everyone was staring at me like I was a hooker. <laughs> said, that depends. How much for a BJ? <laughs> Can't win. I can't wait to travel again. The airlines are offering a special package that takes passengers around and around and around. It's called the flight to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> so was my last marriage. 
<laughs> Thank you, everyone. Back to you. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Lauren. Yeah. You go, girl. <laughs> I actually like wearing a mask. I get to go to places again that they told me never to show my face. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the, the Chili's and Comac and Little Vincent's and Huntington and, and Boston. <laughs> finally go back all right our next comic she's a woman that does the best joan rivers impersonation on earth <laughs> oh, shit. let her hear it donna moran yeah. oh thank yeah. you can we talk grow up tim please oh god I, <laughs> I just turned off the news and there was another black man shot in philadelphia the city of brotherly love and they're looting. They've been looting. They looted a family dollar store. What about your priorities are wrong here? <laughs> Jewelry <laughs> store, liquor store. No family dollar where everything is 99 cents. I don't know. I just thought that was hilarious. Anyway, I was raised here on Long Island, strict Irish Catholic. So I married an Englishman, my family off. <laughs> and it worked. Uh, everything went okay at my wedding, but when I threw the bouquet, his entire family dove for cover. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, my mom is one of the strict Irish, you know, Catholic women abides by those rules of the church, but she rearranges them just a little bit to suit herself. You know what I'm talking about? Like thou shalt not steal, except sweet and low. <laughs> Since I, down to the table. I mean, you know, Catholics are funny. They they find a way around these. There's like loopholes. You know the story of Jesus. He goes into a temple and he's furious and he throws up the tables. He said, "No money lending, no gambling, none of this." But he never said anything about bingo. <laughs> Can you picture Jesus back then going? B9, B9, anyone? <laughs> Mary Magdalene in the back going, Jesus Christ, bingo! <laughs> <laughs> she, wins, she wins a pair of sandals and a year's supply of frankincense, you know. <laughs> frankincense. Anyway, so my husband and I, he was English, this is true, and we used to fight. And the fights were always the same. And it was usually over my having a cocktail or two. And it'd be the same thing. He'd go, oh, here we go again. It's another cocktail, I see. Oh, we're having a terrible discord. Oh, this is just awful. I just can't believe it. This is a right kerfuffle. <laughs> <Kerfuffle>? <laughs> uh -huh. What the hell does kerfuffle mean? I said, Alexa, what's kerfuffle mean? <laughs> Even she didn't know, and she knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so um, I, I got to tell you, the, the sex was not so good, okay? Um, very, you know, the only thing stiff on him was his personality. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing every single time and be like, oh, dear. Oh, oh my. Oh, Lord. Oh, save the queen. Oh, I'm arriving. I'm arriving. I'm like, arrive already. I got things to do. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, to get a rise out of him, I used to have to hang a lantern behind the bed, a couple of lanterns, and run around the room screaming, the British are coming. The British are coming. <laughs> And, you know, before I go, I'll leave you with this one thing, because I'm not even sure about my time. I was timing, but OK. Um, <laughs> the languages, we have the same language, but we have different meanings for different words, like a fag in England is a cigarette. So early in our relationship, too, it was like, oh, uh, that was right after making love. He goes, that was an extraordinary experience. Well, thank you so much, my love. I'm like, what did I just take my SATs? I, I don't get it. But he said, um, oh, that was lovely. What I wouldn't give for a fag. <laughs> <laughs> so I hand him a Marlboro. He turns to me and he goes, oh, no, love, I don't smoke. 
I never <laughs> thought a pack of fags would end my marriage. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. That's my time. <laughs> Donna Moran. Sorry about the English sex. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Damn, you don't enjoy uh, spotted dick. Spotted <laughs> uh, dick. <laughs> yes, yes, well, apparently not. All right, so we got more coming at you. Next comic you've seen here at the Comedy Cellar and Laughing Buddha Comedy Shows. Let's okay. hear it for Carrie Armand. Yeah. yeah. Hi, hi, guys. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm uh, currently on Fire Island, uh, but I was raised um, in L.A. in the 90s. My pediatrician put me on Adderall to help me fit in better at my Montessori school. <laughs> it was one of those um, immersion schools where half the day was taught in English, half in French, all of it was useless. <laughs> Being able to speak French in LA is completely worthless, uh, <laughs> unless you're going to Chateau Marmont. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I couldn't explain shit to my gardener. <laughs> my, uh, my parents were typical LA parents they um when they adopted my little brother I wasn't allowed to tell anyone they uh said he looked enough like my dad <laughs> that no one would notice <laughs> they uh bribed me to lie for them by giving me this um knockoff Louis Vuitton bag and they were like the kiddo it's close enough. <laughs> mm, typical LA. Fake bag. <laughs> Fake brother. <laughs> <laughs> Some men are tits men. Some men are ass men. Fingers crossed there are also under eye bags men. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, my mom's concerned I don't have friends. <laughs> She's right. Um, honestly, I find it such a relief that as an adult, I don't have to have friends. Uh, <laughs> She's worried I'm going to die alone. I see a curmudgeonly old lady on the street. I'm like, oh, she's got it all. <laughs> <laughs> and this quarantine thing is my idea of living the dream. Um, especially the face masks, as someone with a lifelong resting bitch face, <laughs> I suddenly seem more friendly to people. <laughs> yeah. Plus, um, I haven't had to come within six feet of my boyfriend since February. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thanks so much. For Carry on, Mars. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. He speaks French. We leave. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I actually Me took French. Oh, I took French. I actually went to France. This is a true story in a high school trip, and I got my head stuck in the Eiffel Tower. Because <laughs> <laughs> they had that fence on the observation deck, and the whole row, I'm like telling Ernest, I'm going to spit off this thing. He's like, no, you're not. And he was right. <laughs> I was head was stuck and I just spit and just went right back and some Belgianese guy or Belginer or Bel I don't know he smelled Belgian. like syrup. Belgian. Be Bel yeah, well, he yanked my head out. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next comic has performed all over the U.S. Put your hands together for Allison Chadwick. Hey, can you all hear me? Ooh. Who said that? I did. Oh, yes. can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I noticed people on TV say some crazy crap. I was just watching the weather, and the guy's like, New York, look out. You're going to have some wet rain this week. Wet rain? <laughs> well, thank God, because this dry rain sucks. Like, what is wet? <laughs> um, I was watching a documentary last night on John Wayne Gacy, and the narrator said about halfway through, he said, and that's when the killings took a sinister turn. <laughs> what were the killings before? <laughs> before he was killing them with kindness. Now he's strangling them. Oh, <laughs> yes. And I was uh, flipping on Netflix and it said, We see you watched The Seven Dwarves of Auschwitz. 
So we think you might like the Dick Van Dyke show. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'm like, well, I think they're at Netflix. Like you watch a lot of morbid sand crap. You watch documentaries. So you're okay with black and white. You need to lighten up the Dick Van Dyke show. Um, you know, my parents are getting older and I saw some news. And I got worried. So I called my dad and I said, dad, are you the Long Island serial killer? <laughs> and he says back, uh, Allison, those murders on the South shore of Long Island. That's a 45 minute drive from here. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that is like Google maps open right now? Like <laughs> what do you I envision he's thinking there's a university like half a mile away. I could kill plenty of people there. I don't need to drive all the way to the South shore to be killing people. Um, I, I actually call the <laughs> <laughs> they, they said he wasn't the killer, but I remain unconvinced. Um, he actually died about two years ago now, and I keep having nightmares about it. I, I keep dreaming he's still alive. And I'm like, why won't you just stay dead? So I go look in the, I have his cremated remains in my closet along with my grandmother. It's like a whole collection, you know. And uh, I actually came back to clean out my, the house, and it was really like a horror show in the house, just a mess. The basement was like American Horror Story. And that's where I found my grandmother's remains or ashes down there. And then my aunt was like, you know, just to you know the ashes. I'm like, yeah, thanks. I found them. It was a great thing to, to find that day. You know, I'm not stressed up enough, stressed out enough. And I don't know what to do with these ashes. Like, I have no idea. And I, someone sent me an idea. They said, well, you know, you can make them into jewelry. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'll go out and hug earrings and necklace. And someone will say, those are really pretty earrings and a necklace. Um, you know, and I'll go, oh, well, thank you so much. This is my grandmother. And, this <laughs> is my mother. and here's my, like, what? <laughs> Even I'm not that morbid. And that's what I got for you tonight. Thank you for listening. All right. I'm <laughs> um, glad you got to go there. I know you've got your head stuck in the Apple Tower. Oh, thank you. And, I got out. Well, I see. <laughs> Allison Chadwick. Yeah. Woo. Have you ever been to Long Island? Come out here. We're not just beaches full of dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> we also you, you live in Stony Brook. That's nice. That's haunted. That's on the spy trail. Right? Yeah. Yeah. We also have the Amityville Horror and Plum Island Infectious Disease Center. <laughs> All the things a, to- a tourist would like. Yeah. Remember, Montauk inspired Stranger Things, but they couldn't afford the film here. <laughs> That's true. Anyway, we got more coming at you. This guy can't see anything without his glasses. Put your hands together for Big Michael Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mike. It's us. Hey, how's everybody doing? Hey. So let me Good. tell you a little. Let me tell you a little about myself. Uh, my day job is I repair X-ray machines, and one time, I accidentally left the wrench on the X-ray table. I felt really bad for that guy. They rushed into surgery. <laughs> another time this guy comes in he's complaining about abdominal pains they x-ray him and he noticed he had a coke bottle enlarged in his rectum so the doctor goes to consult the wife and the wife starts wigging out that's impossible we only drink pepsi <laughs> <laughs> anyway being in the x-ray business I know a little bit about anatomy and did you know the human hand is made up of 27 small bones. But when I'm bored and lonely, mine has 28. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, whenever I go to the doctor, I seem to have two problems. High blood pressure and enlarged prostate. I'm like, doc, if you check my prostate first, my pressure will be good. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm... As I'm getting up there in age, other things aren't getting up there. So he gives me a prescription for this Viagra. I go back to him a week later. I'm like, hey, doc, these pills, they're not working. And he's like, oh, that's weird. Do you have a picture of your wife? So, so I pull out my phone and I show him a picture. And he's like, I'm going to triple your dose. <laughs> 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 yeah, so I'm married almost 24 years, and I got a little nickname for my wife. It's Tamara. <laughs> Everything this woman yeah. is doing, Tamara. I just wish at the altar she would have said Tamara. <laughs> uh, 
So, you know, I was driving home with her one night. It's really long trip, traffic and everything. I finally get home off the highway and I make a left turn. And I hear this thump. I'm like, oh, terrific. I make another left turn, another thump. I look over and she's over there sleeping. And every time I make a left turn, her head's hitting the window. So I circled the block all night. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, she comes to me. She goes, Mike, Mike, I think I'm getting dementia. I'm like, who's Mike? <laughs> <laughs> this woman is the biggest slob. You know how she, she makes Oscar Madison look like a neat freak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so... She loves to spend my money too. One time she actually spent two eight hundred dollars on a tattoo. It wasn't that bad. It was very nice, very good quality. I just wish it wasn't on a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway, being married to her takes a certain type of blood. Be positive. Too bad I'm O negative. Anyway, <laughs> that's my time. Back to Tim. Thank you. Hey! Big Michael Freeman, let him hear it. Yeah, yeah. You can't see it. There you go. I loved you on the shield. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Our next comic currently tours out of Atlanta, Georgia, and all over the country as a headliner, a feature, and a producer. He's been seen on NBC and Comedy Central, and he combines music with shake and laughter. Let him hear it. It's David H.T. Rosen. Yeah. <laughs> I was lonely, it was after the divorce We met online, of course She was Jewish, we went out on a date She had an Applebee's rib plate Went out on a couple more We were back at the crib, drinking wine, sitting on the floor I told her to get comfortable and she took her shoes off You ready for this, people? Yeah. <laughs> Tried to love her, but she's missing a toe I got a foot fetish, so I said no, yeah Tried to love her, but she's missing a toe She's got no stability Tried to love her, but she's missing the toe. I got a foot fetish, so I said no, yeah. Tried to love her, but she's missing the toe. She's got no stability. How y'all doing, people? <laughs> so my wife, she beat cancer three years ago. Give it up for my wife. Yes. Right, right on. It's, it's not so great. Everything in the house is organic, people. Everything in the house is organic. It's like $400 to get groceries. Even the lube is organic, but it smells like vanilla custard. I got a half mile from the Dairy Queen today. Got a raging heart on. <laughs> there we go get on board here we go it's three minutes i used to enjoy exposing myself before the pandemic my ex-wife was also jewish she likes to wear a crucifix because she thinks it's pretty so basically my ex-wife likes to cross dress <laughs> <laughs> he used to work at bank of america it was my safe place <laughs> My eight-year-old, she was on the backyard play set. I told her to be careful. Natalie, be careful. She said, why, Daddy, why? Has anyone ever been hurt from swigging? <laughs> Scared up. I said, it wrecked my first marriage. Now get back out in the house. All right, it's not. <laughs> Ridiculous. It is tough during the pandemic. I have been in the house for like eight months, right? And the tension is so high at home. Last night, a thumb conflict actually escalated into a full thumb war. <laughs> 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 Will you sing with me? Yeah. Sure. All right. If you know it, sing with me. It goes, it goes. West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground. is where I spent most of my days. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I got one more for you, and thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hey. No, I miss you all. I do, I do, I do. Here we go. All the old Jews are in Miami. The rest in West Palm Beach. It's 82 degrees and a bagel's not far from reach. I sing to thee, all the old Jews are in Miami. Rest in West Palm Beach. It's 82 degrees and a bagel. And a bagel, a bagel, a bagel. We went to the movies. It was an early matinee. All the toilet paper was taken. Old Jews don't play in the back, you sing. Couldn't see the movie. It was so unfair. Stuck behind an old Jewish bro, blue bouffant hair. Sat down for dinner, it was a quarter till four. 
turned in early for the evening, and no one was poor in the back. You sing, all the old Jews are in Miami, the rest of West Palm Beach. It's 82 degrees, and a bagel's not far from reach. I sing to thee, all the old Jews are in Miami, rest of West Palm Beach. It's 82 degrees, and a bagel, and a bagel, a bagel, a bagel. Sing with me. A bagel, 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 He's performed at several clubs in New York City, including Broadway, Greenwich Village, and Gotham. Let him hear it. It's Kelvin Garcia. Yeah. How are you doing? I love how, how diverse it is in the U.S. Like, we have so many different cultures, so many different ways of living, different ways of growing up. Like, I'm Puerto Rican, and growing up Hispanic is, is different. Like, I remember growing up, my mom would take me to meet my cousins, and the kid she'd had me meet is pale as a ghost, blonde hair, blue eyes, real Hitler material. And then <laughs> she'd take me to introduce me to another one of my cousins. And this kid looks like Wesley Snipes. And neither of them speak any English. It was always weird. <laughs> and like, there's a lot of stereotypes too on body types in Hispanics. Like a lot of people say all Hispanics have great bodies and it's true for some, you know, we have J-Lo and, you know, the rest look like a pack of hot dogs, but, you know, there's still love for all of them, <laughs> you know, but uh, growing up, I didn't really bring friends over my house because they'd always want me to introduce me to my family members. Like this one time, my friend came over to me and he said, bro, when you go introduce me to that shawty over there with the fat butt, I was like, my uncle, bro, he go right <laughs> now. You know, and then he got he got all mad and he's like, man, like, I don't understand why, why, why his butt looks like that, man. Like him over there, that guy over there in the corner, that's that's a normal man. But I mean, that's my little sister, bro. That but I could see what you're talking about. You know? <laughs> and like we got weird hair colors, too. Like, I don't know if you can see I have orange hair in my beard and people don't believe me when I tell them I'm fully Puerto Rican. Uh, so one of my friends was curious as to why. So he went to talk to one of my parents and he was like, you know, they were breaking it down to him. You know, my grandfather had really light brown hair, blue eyes. So it must've just passed down to me or whatever. So he comes over to me. He's like, bro, your dad was explaining it to me. Now it all makes sense. I'm like, who? He's like, your dad. I'm like, my dad's not here. Who are you talking about? Him over there with the mustache. Nah, bro, that's my mom. I, she hasn't <laughs> shaved this week yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think that's my that's my time. Thank you, guys. My name is All right. <laughs> Elvin Garcia. Yeah. Remember, a lot of Puerto Ricans have red hair because the uh, gingers were uh, flushed out of Ireland because of persecution. <laughs> True. They went to other Catholic countries. I was actually married to a Puerto Rican woman and her family. They were Puerto Rican too. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and they used to like light candles around me because they thought I was a ghost. And I said, <laughs> I'm alive. I just have to tan. All right. Our next comic, uh, he's from Penyang, Malaysia. He's one of the founders of Penyang Comedy Events and the island's only comedy performance group. Put your hands together for Gairu Ruman. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Oh, yes, yes. we can. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, my name is Garu. I'm performing from Malaysia. It is 7 a.m. in the morning here. Wow. Uh, <laughs> morning. Uh, I like to start by telling everyone what, what the time is. So in case any of you see me yawning during your set, uh, I can pretend it wasn't from your jokes. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I live in Malaysia, but I'm originally from Bangladesh. Uh, in case you don't know anything about Bangladesh, it's a lot like India, just without all the prestige or the potential. Um, <laughs> uh, a 
few people have asked me why I don't have a Bangladeshi accent, and that's because I actually lived in Canada before coming to Malaysia. And then some Malaysians ask me, if we were living in Canada, why did we move back to Asia? Because uh, you see, uh, Canada is like Asian Mecca. Uh, <laughs> but after living in Canada for so many years, eventually my father got fed up with the country. Uh, the weather is too cold. The food is too bland. The people even more so. Uh, he missed the local food, the local people. And above all, he missed being able to beat his children. <laughs> <laughs> Child abuse may be illegal in your country, but here it's joke material. Uh, <laughs> one thing I do miss about Canada is around this time would be Halloween season. And Malaysia doesn't really celebrate Halloween. Uh, but in Canada, kids loved Halloween. It was a great time to eat all the candy you wanted while also meeting your neighborhood sexual predators. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Halloween doesn't work here because Asian kids aren't afraid of the same things. Like in Canada, <laughs> kids are taught to be afraid of insects and germs and traffic and strangers, all these different things. In Asia, kids are taught to be afraid of only one thing. Their parents. Uh, <laughs> like, for example, in Canada, let's say you're uh, eating lunch as a kid in Canada, probably, you know, mashed potatoes or something. Uh, and suddenly a fly lands on your plate. You will not eat that mashed potatoes because now it's been contaminated. Whereas here in Asia, you could have a whole entomological study going on on your plate. <laughs> and you're still going to have to eat that food. Because germs are not going to hurt you as much as your parents will when they find out how much food you wasted. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, uh, I know you, you're, because of the lockdown and all that, you probably don't have Halloween there either right now. But I know you have something going on that's even scarier, which is the election. Uh, <laughs> Now, I want to say, you mm -hmm. might think politics are contentious in your country right now, but at least it's not as bad as in Bangladesh. Like, in Bangladesh, our government is agriculture-based. Uh, agriculture meaning if you do something that the government doesn't like, they will murder you and have your body <laughs> buried in a paddy field. Uh, <laughs> you see, that, that, is, and that, that way you fertilize the rice and feed the nation. That is the circle of life, and that is agriculture-based politics. Anyway, that's my time. Thanks for having me, everyone. Yeah. 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 You're learning so much today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Everyone from everywhere, Malaysia, Japan, Stony Brook. This is crazy. <laughs> uh, and we got an, our next comic is from an, another cultural center. You, she's from the Bronx, and she's been on The View. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Debbie Mazza. Yay. Yeah, Debbie! Right, Thank Debbie you. Mazza. Thank you very much. Unmute myself. I did. Okay. No, we hear you. Okay, great. It's so good to be here. I know I'm a few minutes late. I got. I brushed my teeth. I got a little toothpaste on my other blouse. I wouldn't even wear this blouse if it wasn't for Zoom. I look so chubby in this blouse, but with Zoom, all that matters as long as my shoulders are okay, right? That's, that's what the, I put on eight pounds in, in, in uh, five months with Zoom. And then I have my birthday, I put on seven back. You know, I still can't get it off. It's crazy, crazy. And, you know, a lot of you don't know I was a fat kid. I was one size fits all, had a disclaimer, not you, chubby. <laughs> Oh. I hope I look okay. I really do. I mean, it's so much work between the creams, moisturizers, and lotions. I got into bed last night, slept right on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I went on a date recently. He seemed nice enough. He wanted to go for coffee. He took me to McDonald's. I don't even mind McDonald's. The coffee's good if it's fresh. You know what bothered me? Was that when I got there, he already had the two small cups. What do you buy, senior citizen size? I mean, you know, really. I mean, how cheap can you be, you cheap bastard? <laughs> oh, I, they want to know. They, they want to have phone dates. They said, you want to have like a, a, what is it, when you see each other? A see FaceTime. Yeah, a FaceTime. Are you kidding? You think I'm getting all dressed up for a phone call? Go ahead. Go take a walk. Don't bother me with a FaceTime. I just, play, I just play it off like dumb blondes, even though I don't have my highlights anymore. I just say, 
Oh, I don't know <laughs> how to do that. No, I don't really know. They should only know I'm on Zoom. I got a thing over here. I got a ring light. I got a microphone, you know? <laughs> I'm so with it, you know? I'm with My friends tell me I'm with it, yeah? You should come on one of my shows. <laughs> You'll see the first few minutes how with it I am, but I don't care. I'm having fun. You know why? Because this is all I have right now. I tell you, I was depressed this week. Oh, my God. You know, I can't get married a fourth time. I'll lose my widow's pension. Ah, it's really a bummer. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm trying to work on new material. My daughter doesn't want me talking about her and her family. So, you know, this take so... I can't wait to do regular shows. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I was late today. I got a little toothpaste on my other blouse. I didn't want it. You know what it was? It would have showed. If it was low, I wouldn't have minded. But it was right here. You know, you can't come on with toothpaste. You know, I look like a gavon. You know what I mean? Big with toothpaste on a blouse. Besides, a little color looks better on this on the Zoom. Like I say, it doesn't matter that it's skin tight. I look like a stuffed sausage. Who cares? You only see me from here. <laughs> This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Uh, and Tim, you do a wonderful job. Yay. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> what the hell just happened? <laughs> are we going to start? About? What are you talking about what happened? Thank you for teaching me Italian. Gabon means someone covered in toothpaste. <laughs> 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 it sounds delicious. Mm. Thank you for everyone that participated.